What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. It's good to be back. Um, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be around for live. We will have it covered whether it, uh, we're not sure about Sheets yet, but we will find out whether Rody will be later. But I uh, missed you guys, and I'm ready to talk a little uh, little sports and and uh, get a little get a little bit away from, from, from the medical field for a little bit. And uh, Sheets, how are you doing? And, and uh, any sort of initial thoughts on the slate, how you've been doing lately? I know we, you gave me a little brief sum up pre-show, but... Why don't you, uh, yeah, uh, as far as DFS goes, baseball's rough. Um, uh, had a good MMA thing over the weekend, and um, I've been pretty busy myself, so I haven't been able to be completely laser focused in it. But I haven't seen what you guys have been asking, so I, I want to do that. I know Adam wanted me to talk, do some PGA showdown theory stuff. I'm going to get to that. We'll follow up with Saberson. We have some things uh, improving, hopefully, with that. We have we have we have other stuff that just kind of had to just take a pause for for maybe a week or so, but we're going to get back into there and, and get that and get that going. Um, basketball, you know, we're still two two game slates. Probably going to go to one game slate pretty soon. Um, and uh, yeah, just ready to tackle another you know another challenging baseball card. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I'm ready to get back into it. So why don't we pull up your screen and we can go game by game. Um, Let's see. I will have just for for people out there. I will have my my bets of the day, my stuff uploaded. I, I did I did send in some bets into the Discord, and I sent some directly to people who asked me over and did very well with the NBA bets. So um, at least that part of me is still going strong. That you're stuck in a hospital and you got nothing else to do, and you got a couple of people who like watching basketball. We definitely got to at least watch the basketball game, so that was a nice distraction. Anyway, we'll get into it. Uh, New York and uh, Washington. I'm sorry. You, yeah, that's right. New York and Washington, the first one. And uh, Sheets, why don't you tell me what, what your thoughts are here, and then I'll I'll jump in. So I, it's a 13, 12 game slate, whatever it is. And my overall view of the slate was that I had one, two, three. I had like seven pitchers, pretty much that that I would be more than happy to play. Right. So what I tried to do is 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 limit my stacks, and the way I did it was I ranked them kind of by like raw numbers. Then I kind of looked at them in value. I tried to do a little ownership, whatever. And I just identified four, this four teams that I kind of wanted to focus on. And I didn't really even think about who they were up against. I was just really just looking at my numbers. And then we're firing this up. And one of them is in this game. I, I get to play a team against Patrick Corbin. Sign me up. So I'm going to, so the Mets for me are one, one of the teams that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be attacking the stacking today. Um, and I'm not going to get to either of these pitchers. I'm not going to get to Carrasco, though I can't quite figure out why I'm not getting to Carrasco. I mean, last time I, I said I'm not getting to Carrasco, we freaking were thinking like 800 fantasy points. I don't remember what he did. He's but, been um, here. He's been great. He's been great. So that that's probably going to be the one that drops off my list of seven. Excuse me. It's, that's not on my list of seven that's going to get me. But uh, that's where I am right now is I, I really, really like the Mets uh, to start this off. Yeah, I, I... – I have, I have interest in the Mets. I'm a little concerned about the, the you know, it's not a crazy win. It looks like it's predicted to be about, you know, between seven and 10 miles an hour throughout the night in uh, at the stadium for, uh, blowing in from center. Um, I actually think this is like, if it was a tiny slate, I would suggest actually throwing a Corbin into your mix um, actually has looked really, really good. His last two outings, including like a, you know, he's not, 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 not the strikeouts in the last outing, but he at Colorado to, to go eight innings and, and give up uh you have three runs but to, to go eight innings in colorado yeah. is a is the accomplishment um and he's 5700 but i don't think we need to go down to that far i do like carrasco for what it's worth um i will probably have him in my early my early look mix and i do like the mets as a stack but i am probably going to be looking a little bit elsewhere unless i it, it, just just because on a huge slate i I have this thing in my head where once, when I get that wind blowing in, even if it's just near 10 miles an hour, that's that 10 miles is usually my cutoff. So this is just, just beneath it. But if on a, on a giant slate, it does make me a little bit nervous and it makes me a little nervous in that Corbin has looked better this year. He's only given up one home run all season. Um, and he's always looked better in his last two starts, I should say. But I, but I do think the Mets are definitely one of the teams that are going to be a fairly well-owned stack. And I, I think well, a fairly owned stack, maybe not too owned. But uh, they're definitely on the list for me just to start it off. But I, I'll, I'll finish it. I'll figure out where they stand. But when we're done, um, let's jump over to uh, to the next one. We've got uh, Toronto and New York. Uh, this is, uh, you know, look, we got two two pretty good real life pitchers here, and I think Severino belongs in the mix. That's that's my early look at this, and I'm I'm not overwhelmingly excited at looking at the Yankees as anything more than a secondary stack 
but I do think playing a judge and a Stanton or a judge and a Donaldson, I, I don't love how Donaldson's been all year, but I, I think you can mix in some Mets here. Um, but I don't think that it's, I'm sorry, the Yankees, uh, but I don't, I don't think this is a team I'm going to fully stack. I promise you that, that Bobby and I have not discussed this slate beforehand. I mean, we haven't discussed anything with him in like a week, That's not, true. not to mention the slate. And so let me just say what I was going to say about this is that I think Severino is certainly someone to be sort of in the mix, just like that. And I think the Yankees, once again, exactly like he said, it's not a huge priority for me, but a little two or three man, you know, with the exact guys that he mentioned seems to make sense to me. So they're, gonna, they're not going to be my main stack, but certainly can be a secondary stack. And I would limit it to two or three, uh, three players. And um, completely, I'm in complete agreement with his take on this. Game. Yeah, I think I think that it's, that's, it's always funny when we have the exact same exact same thoughts on everything. And yeah, now now they have now it has no chance for sure. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, well, let's move on to uh, to Boston Atlanta in a game that uh, I, I'm I'm just I'm I'm looking at my weather. I'm up I'm looking at everything here, and I am having a very hard time figuring out why this run total is so low. Now I like I like both these pitchers fine enough well, because freaking Whitlock is like no one right right I mean I mean is that is that what we're we're gonna we're gonna just <laughs> assume this is gonna happen every time I, mean, I, I don't know man like it just feels like you have two high power offenses in a good hitters park in eighty degree weather I I, I, I I'm not like I, I understand that it that you know I would have thought this run total at eight and a half and I would say okay we probably don't want to stack here Kyle Wright has been absolutely awesome. Uh, for the most part of the season, I finally had a, ba- a, a bad ish outing and that he pitched seven innings. They just got there left a little long, you know, and, and didn't have, didn't have the strikeouts in the last outing. Other than that, he's been freaking awesome all year long. So I, I, I'm basically, you know, this game looks like a stay away, but it's one of those where if you're playing a bunch of lineups, I think you want to mix in some stacks, probably more so of the Braves. Um, but like you said, Whitlock has been really good. So it's kind of, a, it's just really weird to see a seven and a half run total in a game like this in Atlanta between these offenses. So I, I, I will probably put the Braves as like a, maybe a seventh or eighth on my list, but maybe a little further even down. But I, I do think if they're really low owned, maybe, maybe worth taking some shots there. And Acuna is too cheap at 5,300 Acuna, unless he's 6k is going to be a guy. I'm going to always say it's like the Jose Ramirez. You just always want to play these guys anyway. If they're less than 6k, I think we just want to play them in general. Acuna is the, the probably the, going to be the best fantasy producer again. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where I bet in this game. I don't have the equivalent of the popcorn machine, I think, for, for baseball, whatever that would be. But if I'm not mistaken, not only did, did Whitlock had nine strikeouts in five innings, I think he had like eight strikeouts in three innings yeah. um, in, that, in that game. He was off to a freaking rocket ship start in that game. Yep. But I, ju- I just think the slate's too big um, to get to either of those guys. Um, and I think the slate is – I don't want to say it's too big to get to Atlanta because, you know, it's never – never so it's never too big to play Acuna in Atlanta, especially – Especially when you have a kind of a volatile young guy. <laughs> right, side. right. Um, so I have Atlanta just on the outside looking in as my top four, but I definitely have them in the mix. And um, that's where I'm at. Yep. Makes sense to me. Um, that's similar page, but I, I do think that if I'm going to play multiple lineups, that that is a stack I'm going to. If you're, if you're playing the lottery ones, that this is a perfect opportunity of, of a team, mm-hmm. should, in my opinion, stack if you're playing 150 kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then we get the, the other, another awesome pitchers duel uh, with Joe Ryan and Verlander. Uh, obviously Verlander is awesome. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Joe Ryan at no ownership is going to be very intriguing. Uh, I know it's a tough matchup. It's not as tough as it might seem, by the way. Uh, this, there, there are some weak spots in this lineup. And I think, look, I, I, Verlander is a priority for me. No question. Joe Ryan is a guy who I will absolutely another perfect example of a guy who could win the slate, who could have easily be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate who no one's going to play. Um, so I, I would be incorporating both these pitchers, but Verlander is the priority and no hitting for me. Yeah. Uh, I think Verlander is one of the top uh, three or four, but like I said, it's, it's, it's a war out there. I mean, I, I have seven pitchers I'm playing and he's, he's one of them, you know, I got to see where ownership comes in on this situation. Yep. Um, uh, I, I will. I will have no problem tossing the highest stone of the guys that I like. That's the way it's going to be. Um, and I have Houston, another one on the outside, just kind of looking in. When I did my builds, like Saber Sim and the Optimizer, kind of wanted me to play Houston. I just really just don't feel well, like that, it. That uh, is actually interesting because that's sort of the same effect as the. It's basically the same situation Atlanta's in, except for Joe Ryan's maybe a little better than Whitlock is. Um, 
but I don't, I don't know, actually, there, you can make arguments on that one. I, I, I would say he is. Um, but that, that is sort of like an interesting, you know, I guess if you're making the 150, maybe incorporating a, like three Houston lineups out of your 150, I think that would make a lot of sense to get at least. I have, a, I have a question. Do you think that, uh, that, that Houston, I just get the sense of this. Do you think that Houston is on par with the Yankees and the Dodgers as teams that are just going to be over-owned every slate because of main value? Not that they don't, not that I don't mean the Yankees and Dodgers don't deserve it. I just mean that, but the Astros, do they now have that cachet that people just think that they're good, you know, all the time? I think, I think somewhat, but I don't think they can be that over-owned on this kind of a slate, like at all. Actually, and against Joe Ryan, I, I, you know, they have a three and a half run total. Uh, It's it's, it's a six and a half run total for the whole game. So I don't think it's, it's a good, it's a good question. I don't think they're on this quite the level of the, of the, of the Dodgers and the Dodgers are going to be over owned more and more this year, especially when they're on the road because they are, they'll get their starting lineups out. Um, that's really the great thing about the Dodgers is the, when they play in Dodger stadium, they don't have their lineups out by lock sometimes. So you can get them at lower, lower ownership because people just don't factor them in as much, but the, the, the Astros, I, I don't think are nearly as good of an offense, but they definitely, you know, with Altuve back, they definitely one through six look pretty strong. And, uh, and even with Pena, McCormick, and Castro, I mean, it is a pretty strong lineup. So, so it's a good question. I, I, I think today they'll be low owned, but I think in general, yes, they, they probably would fall into that category with the, you know, as, as probably they should, you know, with the Dodgers. And I'll tell you, it just goes to show base baseball is just, it's an old unique sport. You had it yesterday. You had, you had the Dodgers on an early, an early start coming in with the lineup against the uh, you know, perfect matchup getting all the ownership and just, you know, just one of those days they got to put up one run against the Pirates. It's just, I, I, it's just I, baseball. It's rough. You know, I, I know you weren't around for live. I did say that they were, they were the team that I was one, you know, one of the three teams that I was interested in stacking the problem. As I said, though, this is the exact type of pitcher that you think they should hit like crazy. And they don't that, oh, that right? the off speed lefty with Quintana, but, but it, you know, is the kind of guy who they're not going to hit. It, basically every time I've said that this year, it's happened. And, and it's, right. it's not just because, I mean, look, I, I know this team well. It doesn't mean they're not going to score 15 runs against one of these guys one of these days. But right. they, 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 those are the games they've struggled. They've been against these weird off-speed lefties. Um, anyway, we can move on to, uh, to Baltimore, St. Louis. And Sheets, I'm curious what you're doing here because I am probably going to be just way, way, way ahead of everybody on St. Louis. I, I just think that this is an awesome spot. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to get ownership. It's 90 degrees in St. Louis today. It's uh, I, the wind blowing out to left. I mean, let's go St. Louis. I, I feel like this is a time where I want to stay, stack St. Louis. And I was curious if you come across that at all. I, so I did, but I didn't. So when I, when I just did my regular, just kind of like, look, see what, 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 what looks good based on my numbers, I didn't get to them. And then when I started building SIM, SIM, SIM lineups, I just kept getting to a shitload of them. Yeah. And so so that that would make me feel as though there's something going on where where they do have a lot of upside, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm into that. You know, the Bradish is, you know, he has uh, he's 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 he can be volatile, too, you know. And yep. and and, um, and uh, I'm 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 in there. Is this the. Yeah, who who are the Cardinals better against? I know they were better against one type of pitcher. Uh, well, they have all the righties who, who crush lefties, but okay. but the thing is, but but I, the part of what I, what I like to do in these seasons is I still I don't care what the numbers say right now. I still don't believe in the overall Baltimore okay. bullpen, and I think Bradish is the kind of guy who I wouldn't surprise me if he goes out there and has a good outing, and it wouldn't surprise me if he goes out there and just doesn't make it out of two innings. Because he can get he can get sloppy with it. He can you know get he, he can he'll walk guys. He gives up hard contact. He has his strikeout numbers. He's only struck out five guys in ten innings so far this year. And these guys are guys who, when they put the ball in play, they they, they do have some strikeout guys. But Edmund Goldschmidt, O'Neill, Arenado. You've got uh, Yepes as as a, as, a, as a spend down. You can play Carlson. I mean, I, everybody. I can go all the way down their entire lineup, and I like it. And I think I'm going to shuffle and make a lot of. St. Louis lineups is one of my early thoughts in the day. So well, I'll tell you something else. I mean, it's the, I think the slate's too big and the options too strong, but Wayne Wright at no ownership. Um, Do you think he'll be no ownership? I think he's going to get owned. Oh, well then forget it. Cause I was just looking at, I, I, first of all, it says out in the DraftKings app, which certainly doesn't help oh, yeah. his ownership. Right. Even though he's, he's starting, you know what I mean? Like yep. it says out right now because he was in COVID protocols. Um, yeah, I didn't really check the ownership yet, but, uh, uh, I wasn't, I, I, w- I would only get to him if he's really wrong. Yeah. And that, and that, I would, I would play Wainwright on, if this was a six game slate, 
um if it's a, because it's such a big slate i want the ultimate upside guys like the verlanders and even the joe yeah. ryan's like joe ryan is you know yeah it's a tougher matchup but if you want to tell me a guy's gonna have 10 strikeouts it's probably not going to be adam wainwright it'll probably be joe ryan and there's similar price range no ownership on ryan i, I would rather take that gamble and just go for so, the ceiling so so i have okay so we go to this next game and i just have bobby's voice in my head right now okay <laughs> um because I have four stacks that I decided I was going to just prioritize. One was the Mets and the other one, one of them is going to be Kansas city. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, Bobby's going to come in. Oh, and it's every one of stack against Perez, every single start and nobody ever gets there, you know? Right. Um, and so I'm going to have to just kind of think about this okay. whole thing, you know? Um, not only does it do, do teams just not get there. He's actually, he's actually been good. In the last 20, one, 20 fantasy points, 20 fantasy points, 20 fantasy points. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I do have Kansas City as a team I want to target. I'm gonna have to really worry about it. Uh, and I don't have interest in either of the pitchers. I have no problem if anybody wants to play these guys, uh, either either of the hitting. Uh, I will just say that these pitchers both fit the mold of guys who gets overstacked against yeah. immensely. I mean, Brad Keller's given up a total of what, and, and, and he's, he's what he's had five starts and he's given up a total of six runs. He's been one of the better pitchers in baseball, believe it or not, in real life. His strikeouts are never there. So it always looks like, oh, he's given up contact. He's the bat, you know, it's just getting lucky with all this stuff. I'm not saying Brad Keller's in play at all by any means, but I am saying that I am, I'm not the guy who's going to probably be stacking in these games. It's just, I want to stay consistent with baseball. It's not a, you know, we all know that anything can happen on a, on a given day but I'm not going to keep stacking against guys where even teams are even like have double digit ownership. Not that there's, there's a number of guys. I mean, I think there's like eight guys in this game who are going to be 10% or above owned. And I'm just not going to, to be, be a part of that on a, on a massive slate personally. Um, that's just where I'm at. Cleveland right. White Sox. Um, yeah. This is another uh, one of the, one of the pitchers in the mix. And that would be Giolito. Um, I don't have interest in the, uh, in Quantrill, obviously. And, and I do have some interest in the White Sox. They didn't just quite make it into my top four, but I, they're certainly right right in there. So that's that's where I'm at this game. I think the White Sox are interesting, and Giolito was obviously always interesting. Yep. Um, yep. I, I basically couldn't – the White Sox are always in play. Um, I, I like their lineup. Uh, Quantrill has been – consistently very solid this season uh, hasn't given up more than three runs in the start has given up you know he gives up some hits he walks he gets he gets sloppy walk wise which which I'm always I always love stacking against guys who are sloppy so I'm gonna have to wait and see if I want to go with the White Sox later I do think you're gonna get them at pretty low ownership uh, again nice and warm really really strange you take one week away sheets and all of a sudden all the all the games that were 50 degrees are now 80 degrees <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of strange and um, yeah the White Sox definitely definitely has a low owned stack I can get behind it. Um, it's not my top uh, priority, though. So I have them a little bit secondary. I do think as a one-off play, uh, we're going to start wanting to play some Moncada. Um, uh, probably would be the one who stands out. And, and Grandal, I believe, is still cheap on on uh, FanDuel. Yeah, 2.4 for Grandal on FanDuel. That's probably a, an awesome play over there, even though he's you know not, not been himself quite this season. But I, I really would like to get to some of that on FanDuel. Um, probably not, not in play on DraftKings for me though. Um, all right. Uh, Kluber against the angels here and uh, we've got it in LA and weird. You look at all these games all over that, that were all cold. And then, and in the place that was warm, the warmest was LA. And now we've got LA. It's cool down here. Uh, it's 62 degrees down in, in Anaheim today. Um, you do have wind, nice wind blowing out to center field, 12 miles an hour predicted between 10 and 14 throughout the night. Uh, I am just probably going to be completely off of this game in all formats. Uh, these teams both have the ability to, to, to break a slate. And I just, I, I just don't want to mess with it. Uh, Kluber uh, has been good. And uh, Detmers, I believe in the talent level. I could see these guys getting hit, but I, I'm probably just staying away from this game on a big slate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I kind of again just just to dark throw it. I, I I just selected Tampa as one of those other one of mm -hmm. the other teams I was going to go for. Um, just mm -hmm. I don't. Nobody ever plays these guys. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So I figured I would take a shot. Uh. And then, 
I had the Angels as one of those outside looking in teams. Uh, I don't like the weather. I mean, I don't like the, the the temperature like you just mentioned, but the but the wind might might offset that. So maybe it's net neutral. Who knows? Yeah. Um, so I do have a little bit of interest in the Angels, but for me, it's more it's on the Tampa side, and I don't. Uh, I you know I don't have any interest in any of these pitchers. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I've got the. Yeah, I got you. Um, all right. What do we have next? We have. Let me just I'm, I'm double checking which is next on your for your. You get Clevenger. You got the uh, yeah the 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 what do we the, the the what to do with this this situation here? Um, I, I think that Clevenger is. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. What do we do here? This is this is one of those that, that's going to be tough for me. I mean, he's still coming back from a pretty serious injury. We have a huge slate. The price is is egregious uh, based on the talent level we know that he had in the past. But part of what his value was was that even if he gave up four runs. He was a guy who could strike out 11 guys and pitch eight innings. He would throw 120 pitches per start. He's not going to do that in San Diego. He's going to do that. Was that was Cleveland let their pitchers go forever? San Diego pulls their pitchers and, and lets their bullpen take over late. Um, I'm 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 sort of off of this game a little bit, uh, but I do think Clevenger is definitely. I'll consider it. I just don't know if I need the savings, and I just think there's other pitchers with just monstrous upside, and I'm worried about playing a guy on a on a, on a massive slate that doesn't. Uh, doesn't have you know the leash that maybe we want from him that's that's my fear um now for me i mean for those that played clevenger revenge going back into cleveland that didn't uh work out so hot um but uh, to 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 play point counterpoint i mean coming off of like his on his first start they they, they rolled him out there for 95 pitches um no it's weird it's, it, I, that's what's that's what's strange to me but Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean and it know. wasn't as if they wanted to get him a certain amount of innings because they did take him out after four and two thirds, you know. Um, so, I mean, for me, I, look, I, and I'm 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 a sucker for like long term talent and stuff like that. Like I remember Clevenger being good, even yeah. though I can't exactly remember when it was. Um, and and he's he's at home against against Chicago, and uh, he's less than seven K. Um, I'm I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna fire him up. Yeah, I think you sold me a little bit. I, it didn't take much because I, I I do agree that the 95 pitches in the last start does give you enough confidence that if they're going to let him go, I think they had a big lead in that game and they were trying to get him through five. Oh, um, maybe. I think I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I have to double check it, but but that that's that's the only reason I could understand why they would would do that. It's very strange, you know. You don't. That's just something you don't see these days. But Clevenger was a guy who, when he pitched, uh, sort of like a la Trevor Bauer and all the other Cleveland guys from that from that era. When he pitched, he pitched a ton. He pitched, a t- you know, he threw 120 pitches and it was like, like it was nothing. So yeah, dude, yeah you that. know what? They only won five to four. So I don't, so it wasn't a blowout thing. No, but it might've been, it might've been like five to one or something going into the, into the, into the sixth. Or and then he gave up three runs. They could have something like that, I think happened. Maybe I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I got to, okay. you know, I, but I, but I do think in, you know, I, I'm, I'm in on, I'm in on the Clevenger, I think actually, you know, I, I think you, you're right. You're a hundred percent right. It's, it's probably too good of a, a thing to, to pass up on. So I, I do, I would, I would say, I'm, I think I'm going to make Clevenger a priority actually for myself. By the way, um, when you guys are watching this, this is early in the day. So sometimes I'm going to have, my opinions will vary quite a bit. Um, uh, I'm still open to doing a lot of different things because I'm still catching up a little bit. Uh, anyway, we can move on to Miami, Arizona. You like Miami as chalk tonight? I mean, is, is that going to happen again? Um, do you, I think it is, right? Like I don't know, because yeah. I like them. I'm just kind of hoping they, they're not chalk. <laughs> just... Yeah, I think you're going to get, like, Garrett Cooper at 2.6, batting third. And, I know. Oh, you know, hitting home runs, it feels like, every day. It just it, – Solaire at 3.6 feels yeah. very tempting. And, you know, uh, Jazz is a guy I just believe in the talent. I think you can make a nice – I guess I'd probably look at him more as a secondary stack for myself. Okay. But I, I do think they're going to be popular, and I probably would avoid that situation – uh, we have started to see a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, he had, he had the injury in the last outing uh, against this Miami team, Bumgarner. He's he's gotten through when he when he has pitched though, he's basically gotten through enough innings every other start. He's given up some hard contact, but I, I would probably be more on the side of avoiding this game on a big slate. Yeah. And, and Lazardo is 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 a great tournament play, but he's getting some ownership. Um, and I, and I think I like the guys around him better who are going to be even lower on. So that's where I stand with Lizardo, I guess. Okay. Um, Philly and Seattle. Uh, 
this is not the day that I'm going to stack against Robbie Ray because I, I like stacking against Robbie Ray on the smaller slates. Um, the bigger slates, it, it feels a little bit like maybe we're reaching. Uh, it, it crossed my mind. I mean, it, it's, it's, you have some really good righties in, in Philly. Uh, obviously, it's a pitcher's park he's pitching in. Um, I'm not interested in Ray at all, but I, I am interested in Nola. And I think Nola might be along with Verlander if I had to make, make my first two starting pitchers. I think those would probably be the first two guys I go to. It does worry me. I think Seattle's offense is better than people give him credit for. But I, I do think that Nola is just elite level uh, strikeout, doesn't walk guys. I just, they're just the kind of guy I'm always going to want to play in DFS. So that, that's what I've got in this game is basically Nola. Yeah. I got both pitchers. Yep. Um, Nola and Ray, they're right in the mix. They both have upside. They both can get blasted. I mean, it's, they, they can. Um, and these are tournament, tournament plays. Uh, I didn't get to either of the hitting, you know what I mean? Even though based on what I just said, you're probably supposed to play some of both sides. Um, I just didn't quite get to it today. Um, mm -hmm. so for me, it's just the two hitter, the two pitchers. Yeah. I do think that Reese Hoskins at 4k and 4,600 for Castellanos. So you, you can, I, I don't mind like getting, getting to some of those guys, but again, big slate going to narrow my pool a little bit and, uh, and not spread out personally, cause I'm not playing as many lineups today, but I, I, I definitely could see the argument every which way for this game. You could say the pitchers, you could say the hitting, <laughs> like every, everything makes some sense to me. Um, which brings us to the last one, which. Uh, Alex Wood and Senzatella in San Francisco. I, I look guys, I'm just going to say this. I think I'm the guy who thinks Alex Wood is actually a good pitcher. I was the one who defended him forever. He gives up home runs. Um, I'm not going to play anybody in this game. Probably Alex Wood at price at 8,100 is probably a little too low, I guess, but I just want guys with ceiling on this biggest slates. And I don't, you know, I don't see Alex Wood going out there and having a 10 strikeout game anytime soon. Um, oddly, he has a weird, a weird pattern going back to when he was a Dodger, where the games where he does have the high strikeout games tend to be the games where he gets hit the most. So it's kind of a strange thing, but like, you know, Hideo Nomo was always like that. He would have 12 strikeouts, but give up four home runs in a game or something, you know, um, I, I'm just off this game entirely. Uh, basically that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. I like Alex Wood is one of the seven. Um, I don't know if he's going to be in the actual top three or four. But, you know, if he's home against Colorado, I mean, then he doesn't have to, you don't even have to be that good. You know? <laughs> yep. um, so he's, he's definitely in there. Um, uh, and I'm definitely going to get to none of the hitting. Yep. I, I, that's, that's, that makes sense to me. Um, for what it's worth, I do have my, my pitchers being ranked uh, in order, Verlander, Nola. I'm going to put Clevenger up there now as number three, which sounds weird because I was sort of, trying to find a reason to fade him. Um, and then I would have Giolito as my number four guy today with, with, with a potential chance that I might just say F it and, and throw Joe Ryan in, in the mix. And then yeah. for hitting stacks, I like, I like um, my favorite is right now, St. Louis. I like the Mets and I am probably going to try some of the Atlanta stuff at no ownership um, with secondary stacks of the Yankees and the White Sox. That's, that's, that's sort of where I'm at on this slate. Did you take a look at FanDuel or no? I have, I've looked at it a little bit, but I don't feel that anything was uh, so, so much that it would change my, my point of view that it's basically sort of the same plays that I like. I, I, I agree with that. Actually, I have pretty much the same, um, the same group uh, in, in uh, on FanDuel, except there's one, where's my seven pitcher I'm missing. So I have Ray Severino, Clevenger, Verlander, Nola and Wood again, but I just, I think I'm missing a, a, a seventh. Now I just forget who it is. Uh, Ray, Severino, Clevenger, Verlander, no, I don't know. Oh, G Giolito is probably too expensive over here. No, he's 10-3. Okay. Yeah, it's just a bad pivot off of maybe Verlander over there. Yeah, he's actually fine too. So yeah. Um, yeah, so all those guys look fine over there. Nothing really, nothing real different. Yep. Um, and, and if I was gonna I was gonna I'm gonna throw out if I was gonna play another pitcher, I am surprised that Brad Keller in early looks because of his his projection is actually getting owner Brad Keller getting ownership. We usually only play Brad Keller at like 5K, but he's been good. I just, yeah, I think it's just the wrong way to play on these slates. I think you want the strikeout upside for what it's worth. The guys with the highest K props on the slate are, it's actually Robbie Ray is one of them. He's at six, at six and a half. You've got uh, uh, six and a half for Verlander, six and a half for Nola, and everybody else is five and a half or below. 
Um, I think Sever, if, if you wanted to double spend down, I think you're looking at Severino and Clevenger. And if you wanted to double spend up, I think I'd be looking at Verlander and Giolito or Nola. That's, that's the way I, I have this broken out. And uh, I, I'm sorry not to be live tonight. And whoever is, whether it's Sheets or, or Rody, we will have you guys covered. Um, and uh, yeah, Sheets, just let me know and, and we'll, we'll, we'll work that out. Um, yep. Any other slot thoughts before we get out of here? No, we're good. All right. Good luck, everybody, tonight. And uh, let's make some money.